In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of God the Father Almighty, the love of Jesus Christ His Son, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. I bless the body of Mary Ellen Cove with this holy water that recalls her baptism. With Christ she had died. May she rise with him on the last day. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, Mary Ellen Koff, who has fallen asleep in Christ, May rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May we say it. Two verses. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing, fresh from the word. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the So play praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. The first reading. This is a reading from the book as Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, 
a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a tie to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again And me to walk doth make Within the paths of righteousness In for his own name's sake Gospel acclamation. Can everybody stand, please? Alleluia! 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 Seek the Lord while he is still to be found, call to him while he is still near. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hell full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. 
And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in our old age has conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May we please sit. May the soul of our sister, our mother, our friend, Mary Ellen Coffey, rest in perfect peace. Amen. Before the funeral, I met with the family and um, I asked them to choose the readings for this ceremony, as I always do. I was surprised when they chose the gospel because it is not a typical gospel for funerals. But they explained to me that Mary had a passionate love for our blessed mother and that she wished that the chosen gospel be read at her funeral. I had to concede, respecting the wish of the one who passed and also in appreciation of our life of commitment to our blessed mother. And I pray today that our blessed mother, to whom she devoted her life, may intercede for her and receive for her eternal pardon so that she may have a place of eternal repose in the bosom of Abraham. What does this mean to us? Or what should this mean to us? Mary's life is gone. We will not see her again. But she's not dead. She lives on in her hearts, in our minds, in our memories. She lives on in the laughter those moments we spend with her brought to us. She lives on in her life of love of our God and of the woman after whom she was named. Her life of faith should be an invitation to us. Her love of our Blessed Mother should be a challenge to us, especially at this time when the world seems to be indifferent to things religious. At this time when human knowledge has become so proud that God seems to be neglected. 
and religious people and people of faith seem to be people who should be mocked and ridiculed. People who the world think are ignorant and stupid for believing that there is God. A time like this needs women like Mary who loved our blessed mother. And if there is a legacy that we should imitate and emulate, it is that legacy of our faith. And I encourage your family and friends to think about it. For we will only walk this way but once. We only have one chance to live. And whatever life we live here will determine what will happen in the hereafter. Be strong. Do not be discouraged. Do not let your hearts be broken. For God is with you. May the soul of Mary and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the dance of the Lord, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee But they would not dance and they would not follow me I danced for the fishermen, James and John They came with me and the dance went on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be said he Almighty, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church Amen We, as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Mary, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying, as one man who chose to die, so that in your sight we, may all, we all might live forever. And so, in company with all the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. May we please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, Paul, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Mary Ellen Coffey, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed of and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. With a bow, let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May we please kneel. My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. This is Jesus Christ. This is you who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed indeed are all of us who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ remain with us and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Please, for the Holy Communion, those who are prepared to receive Holy Communion, Catholics who are prepared, you come forward and this side is very, is very um, tight, so you, we walk through this side of the aisle, of the coffin, and when we receive, we can go left or right, okay, depending on where we sit, all right? And if you are not a Catholic, uh, but you would like to receive a blessing, you come with your hands across your chest, and I will bless you when you come, okay? Thank you. Pardon. 
understanding that we are pardoned in giving to all men that we receive and in dying that we're born to eternal All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for our journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Mary may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We sit for the eulogy. This is a poem by Mary Elizabeth Fry, written in the 1930s. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glint on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you wake in the morning hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circling flight. I am the soft starlight at night. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there, I did not die. We grieve for the soul that has been lost, yet we should note the freedom of this particular soul. Our grandmother, who has been trapped in a cage of darkness, has been let out to wander blissfully into a light she has not seen for almost three years. We wonder if she is young again, wandering happily in the fields of Ireland. We wonder if she is dancing and embracing those she's lost along the way. We wonder most of all if she's happy again, for she deserves nothing else. We will miss you, Nana, 
and you will always hold a very special, a special place in our hearts. A yesh degu reva hanum. have a stunt double in case I uh, start to weep here because it's always difficult these things but uh, I'd like to thank you especially for for coming uh, today it is really appreciated for you to take the time out to to do this and uh, we'd uh, like to see you at the cemetery uh, as well and uh, back at 3A Heath Dean Road uh, as well to celebrate the life of, uh, of Mary. Um, I'd also like to particularly thank those that visited Mum in hospital uh, during the last three years that she was unwell, and uh, particularly Christopher McPartland, who's not here today, but he spent um, quite a number of his evenings, he's, he's, had a, he's, he's a busy chap, but he took time out to visit Mum in hospital, and we're very, very grateful for that. So a little bit about Mary, a lot of you will know these stories, but uh, some, of you, uh, some of you won't. Mary Ellen Cuff, a boy before she was married, was born in Tiefclaw, Donegal, in November 34. She was one of eight children, two girls and six boys. Sadly, when she was just eight years old, her youngest sister, Annie Bridget Boyle, of just two years and six months, and her youngest brother, John Francis Boyle, of one year, both died in the same week of scarlet fever. She often spoke of Annie's beautiful red hair. The farm they grew up in consisted of just two rooms, with no running water, no gas, no electricity, and no toilet. The nearest shops were many miles away, and the roads were just muddy tracks. Despite the ruggedness of this Donegal hillside, I know from experience that in the summer, there was no nicer place to be. But in winter, it would have been very challenging. Mum and her siblings would walk the two miles to school in Monria, where there were probably no more than about 30 children across all school years. In those days, you left school at 14, and in the years until Mum was 21, she would help on the farm and ride her bike to other farms to help other relatives with their children. People recall how joyous and lively the farm was, especially on a Sunday afternoon when there would be music, singing and dancing. The farm could not really sustain the whole family as they grew older, and many of Mum's brothers sought work in England. Mum came with her brother Tim at age 21 to live in Croydon with her cousin Mary. This must have been quite a culture shock for her given the beauty of Ireland versus the metropolis, which was a growing Croydon. Mum lived with the McHales, an Irish family, and secured work in the Bowaters cardboard factory, where she worked for several years. Mum had great friends in Kathleen Gallen, Mary and Lizzie McPartland, Kathleen McHugh, and the three McHale sisters, Maureen, Nora, and Peggy. She also regularly saw all her brothers, Charlie, Danny, Willie, Tim, and James, there would always be someone to go to an Irish dance hall with. Mum loved fashion and Irish music, and of course dancing. They would always go on a Sunday afternoon to venues such as the Gary Owen in Fulham, or the Galtimore in Kilburn. One evening Mum was at such a dance in Sutton, behind the Holy Rosary Church, dressed impeccably, I'm sure, and looking beautiful with her long black flaxen hair. A certain gentleman, called Joseph Cuff, was absolutely dumbstruck by her beauty. One dance of the old-time waltz, and he was hooked for life. Joe took Mary to the theatre on their first date, and they were together for a year before Joe went to Wales to work, and without the benefit of social media, they lost touch. Three years later, Joe came back to London and so fate would have it, on a night out in Croydon, he bumped into Mary again 
and one year later, in February 1960, they were married. Mum embraced her new relationship with the whole of the Cuff family. Joe's mum, Nanny Weedy, as we called her, became very much a second mum and best friend to Mary. Living just up the road, we would see Nanny and Joe's two brothers, Bill and Michael, and their families very regularly. Everyone that knew Mary well will know how much she loves children, and having her own son and daughter, Bernadette and Christopher, <coughs> was all she ever wanted. She was the best mother that any child could ever ask for. She would walk the mile and a half to school each day twice until she decided to get a bike with a carrier, that was. Mum was very house proud and welcomed guests to the house regularly, where there was always a cup of tea and a freshly baked scone waiting, which you could never refuse. Our house was a tremendously happy place, and it would have been impossible for Mum to pro provide more love and comfort than she did. Looking back, I cannot think of a nicer place to be than in Mum's snug with a cup of tea and one of her famous scones. That will always be the thing I miss the most. When the kids were off hand, Mum took some part-time jobs, working in the kitchen of Sutton High School and then helping a friend as a care assistant in an old people's home. She thoroughly embraced looking after her grandchildren as if they were her own, and they all loved her dearly. Mum also loved her holidays, especially when Mum and Dad started to go abroad and they travelled around all the Balearic and Canary Islands, Egypt, Turkey, and in more recent years went on to cruises to America and the Caribbean. She particularly loved any decent beach and all sorts of live entertainment, especially music and dancing. No matter how exotic these places may have been, I know her many trips back to Ireland were always her happiest. She did always moan about the packing and then the washing when she got home, however. So our mum may not have been a high-flying businesswoman. She didn't invent anything or write a book. To many, her life may have seemed a little ordinary, but let me tell you, it was anything but. She brought happiness to so many people in her life she was charming, funny, caring, non-judgmental, and she wanted to wrap her arms around everyone and take whatever pain they had away and make it her own. She would have done anything for anyone that needed it. Mary did suffer from bouts of depression, but for the most part, she had the strength to control this difficult illness, and most people would have never known Sadly, however, some three years ago, <coughs> the effects of depression defeated her and led to a slow, very cruel and sorrowful demise. I know that whilst Mum's dancing on earth may have stopped some three years ago, Mum will once again be dancing that old-time waltz in heaven, smiling, happy, and awaiting her lifelong love, Joseph. Thank you. May we please stand? <laughs> Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Mary Ellen Kov. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Mary again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
Saints of God, come to our aid. Hasten to meet our angels of the Lord. Receive our soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Mary Ellen Koff, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, she lives forever. Forgive her sins. Forgive the sins that she committed through human weakness. And in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, okay. okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'll be ready, yeah. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you. I'll see you soon, sir. So? They've all gone out that way. Okay, that's it's okay. okay yeah, it's okay, that's fine. Right. Thank you. Sorry, excuse me, sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Hi, Bridge. Bridge. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> this is a hello to her. Right. There's no light in the front. There's light. Oh, there is. <laughs> 